Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I hope that you woke up with Jesus on your mind this morning. And what a wonderful privilege to be able to explore the Word of God and all the hidden mysteries that He has lying therein together with you. Now, today is January the 14th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, as I told you in our last time together, as we ended the book of Romans, we're going to begin the book of Ephesians. And if you have the Message Bible, and you can pick up a copy of this at christianbook.com for under $10, I would encourage you to do so because it's a great devotional aspect of reading. I study and learn from the King James Version, but as a devotional, in other words, as a time to bathe in the Word of God, the Message Bible is unequaled. You see, there's a difference in studying the Word of God and reading the Word of God or being bathed in the Word of God. Studying the Word of God is an intellectual aspect of understanding the deeper things in the meaning of the passage. Bathing in the Word of God is simply allowing it to wash over you and cleanse you from the inside out. And we need both. So I want to begin this morning by first reading out of the Message Bible and then going to the King James Version. Now Paul begins in writing his letter to the church at Ephesus, which most likely was just a small home fellowship, and he says, I, Paul, am under God's plan as an apostle, a special agent of Christ Jesus, writing to you faithful believers in Ephesus. I greet you with the grace and peace poured out into our lives by God and our master, Jesus Christ. Now, we knowing that the, the word of God is timeless and applies to us as much as it did them in that day that this letter was written, we could say, I, Paul, an apostle, a special agent of Christ Jesus, am writing to you and filling your name there. I greet you and filling your name there with the grace and peace that has been poured out into our lives by God our Father and our Master, Jesus Christ. He continues by saying, How blessed is God, and what a blessing He is to each of our lives. He's the Father of our Master, Jesus Christ, and He takes us to the high places of blessing in Him. Long before He laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. And what pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. And so what Paul is doing here is he's opening up by allowing us to take a glimpse into the splendor of God, into the plan of God. And even as minuscule as we may seem in all of the great things that God has created. I mean, when you consider 7 point billion people on earth, and then when you single us out, we seem so small in that great eternal plan. But each of us individually play a very significant role, a major role in the eternal plan of God. And that's what Paul is saying. Well, to the King James Version, Paul begins by saying, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, or sent one, and we know that Paul had a personal account with Jesus. He was taken up to the third heaven, which would be the kingdom of God. He sat in the physical presence of Jesus and was taught by Jesus, prepared for his ministry to take the message of Jesus to the pagan nations, to the Gentiles. And so he says, I've been sent by Jesus Christ, by the will of God, 
to the saints, to the chosen, to the elect, to the select ones which are in Ephesus. And of course, today, 2,000 years later, that would include you and I. And to those who are faithful in obedience in Christ Jesus, who wake up each and every morning, and our only priority is bringing pleasure unto the Lord. And so he says, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we look up this word grace and peace in the Greek, grace means pleasure, sweetness, loveliness. So Paul is saying, pleasure, sweetness, loveliness be unto you, and peace from God our Father. That is a settled peace in knowing a sovereign God, that God is in control of all things at all times. And even though it may bring us displeasure, even though it may bring us discomfort, even though it may bring us pain and agony and misery, as we see all the things and we feel all the things, we experience all the things that are happening in the world around us, God is in control and he is working out his eternal plan for his eternal purposes. And it is our duty simply to rest in him and be at peace along the way. And so he says in verse three, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Notice, all spiritual blessings. Is money a spiritual blessing? Not in the context of what we're speaking about. Material possessions, a roof over our head, shoes on our feet, food in our belly. These are all blessings, but they're not the spiritual blessings that Paul is talking about. Paul is referring to what he said in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, when he said the fruit of the Spirit or the spiritual blessings is love, unprejudiced love, love that has no bounds, love that loves our enemies, truly from our heart. We're not conforming ourselves to this love. This love is within us and it's struggling to come out. And so God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He's planted within us his love, an undying love. A love that can say, as much as I disagree with them, as much as I don't like what they're doing, Father, forgive them. For as you forgave me in the wickedness of my sin, so offer unto them your love and let them experience your love and look past their ignorance, look past their rebellion, deal patiently with them. Do not snatch them from this earth until they come to a crossroads where they have a true, actual experience with you and they have an opportunity to bow the knee before you or walk away in rebellion. And so the spiritual blessing is love. The spiritual blessing is joy. And again, this joy comes from knowing that God is sovereign. And that's a word that you should explore, friend, the sovereignty of God, that he is in absolute control, that nothing happens without his permission that he is the conductor behind the scenes of life. And as this play is being performed out on the stage of this earth, the final climax will be that Jesus is exalted above all others and every knee will bow, hallelujah. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord of Lord, that he is right and we have all been wrong, that he offers truth even when we desire to walk in falsehood. And so another aspect of these spiritual blessings is joy. Joy in knowing that no matter how man tries to thwart the plan of God, Jesus is on the throne. Another aspect of the spiritual blessing is peace, which we've talked about. For most of us, our lives are like a raging river that a top-notch kayaker would have a hard time navigating. But if you can picture in your mind a quiet, still lake, not a ripple on the water, it looks as if it were a sheet of glass. That's peace, friends. And that's where we're to be in our soul, in our relationship with our God. Another aspect would be long-suffering or patience. 
And as we are patient with others, as we are patient with God, even working in our lives, this brings gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness or humility, temperance, which is self-control. And against these things, there is no law. So when Paul says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has in mind these spiritual blessings that he's offering unto us. And we must each choose to reach out and receive those gifts, become a partaker of those gifts. Choose not to walk in the ways of the flesh, but walk in the Spirit of God. And he's blessed us with all these spiritual blessings from the heavenly places that are found in Christ. And why does he do this? Because of verse 4. Because he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Before the world was created, he had you in mind, your life in mind, your obedience in mind, your sonship in mind. And he did this before the foundation of the world so that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He has predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. We have been adopted into the family of God. And he did this through the life and death of Jesus, his son. And this was done according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. And this, Jesus' sacrifice, has made us accepted in the beloved. Nothing that we have done, what Jesus did on our behalf. And that's why we have redemption through Jesus' blood the forgiveness of sins from the once and for all sacrifice that Jesus offered according to the riches of his grace. There's nothing that any of us did to deserve his mercy, his compassion. But because of his mercy, because of his compassion, he's looked beyond our sin, he's covered our sin because we received the sacrifice. Because we have been crucified to this world, and now all of our hopes, all of our desires lie within his kingdom and the order of his kingdom. And he has abounded toward us in all wisdom. In the Greek, that simply means we learn how to regulate our relationship with God. He's abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, which would be proper conduct in our service to God. And he's made known unto us the mystery of his will, according again to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. And what is this mystery that it speaks of? Well, in chapter 2, verse 18, it says, For through Jesus we both, who is both? Jew and Gentile. We both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. This is the mystery of God, how that all people everywhere have an opportunity to be brought in, to be adopted into the family of God. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, when everything comes together, when the eternal plan of God has been fulfilled, when Jesus breaks through the heavens and comes back the second time, not as a lamb, but this time as a lion, as king, coming back to rule the earth which belongs to him, to restore all things to its proper order, so that he will gather together throughout all the face of the earth, all tribes, all nations, all tongues, all colors, all peoples. He will gather together in one, all things in Christ, things that are in heaven, which would be all the angels, and things that are on earth, which would be all men. And all things will be brought together in him, because it is in Jesus that we have obtained our inheritance, being predestinated, chosen, and selected according to the purpose of God, who works all things after the counsel of his own will, 
his own good pleasure. It's all about Jesus, friends. And we should consider it such a privilege and honor to be accepted by him, to be chosen by him. And it's for this reason that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. All of our worship, all of our adoration, all of our praise will be directed to Jesus in that day because it is in Jesus that we have trusted after we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. And it was in that day when we surrendered our lives, when we bowed our knee before the Lord Jesus, that we were sealed with his Holy Spirit of promise. And his spirit within us is the earnest of our inheritance. It is what we work so diligently for. And we do this until the redemption of the purchased possession or unto the day of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the praise of his glory. And as Paul reminds us of that day when we met the Lord Jesus, when we bowed and humbled ourselves before him, when we unloaded the burdens of our sin. The freedom that we experienced in that moment, the lightness that came over us as the heaviness fell off of us, the joy that erupted within our souls, the love that spilled over to everyone that we met. It is in that spirit that we should be walking each and every day. And yet each of us, you and I know that that isn't true, that we have to fight and struggle to regain even a small taste of that each day as we wake. It's almost as if that's what we're chasing. We want to experience it again. And we can, friends, but it's all about our perspective. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is he. And when we wake up each day, our minds run a thousand different directions stealing our joy, stealing our peace, stealing all the spiritual blessings that he offers us that he so desires to bestow upon us. And we must make a conscientious, desperate effort to focus our mind upon the things of God and away from the things of this world. And that's what Paul is reminding these young believers in the church of Ephesus And that's what he's reminding us of, friends, as he begins this letter. It's all about Jesus, both what Jesus is doing in the world around us as he brings his eternal plan to completion and about what he's doing in each of us, each and every moment of our lives. And for that, he deserves all your adoration, all your praise, and all your worship. And so as you face the pressures of this life today, the things of this world, remind yourself often that all the spiritual blessings of God are right in front of you. But you must be the one that chooses whether you're going to be at peace or whether you're going to worry, whether you're going to be angry and bitter or whether you're going to allow yourself to walk in joy and love, whether you're going to be an emotional wreck in the situations that are taking place around you, or whether you're going to be patient, meek and humble, gentle and kind. Well, I pray today, friend, that you will walk in the spirit, in the fullness of the spirit of the Lord Jesus, and that you will experience all the spiritual blessings that he offers unto you as his child. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful that you're again with us. I pray that your journey will be blessed and that you'll continually fit yourself for the kingdom of God. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.